I didn't intend to become involved in the fashion industry anymore. I trained as a set designer. Graduating in the 80s with a degree in theatre design and history of art from Wimbledon School of Art. Renowned for his work with the likes of Alexander McQueen, Tim Walker and currently Gareth Pugh. Costin has envisioned and set the scene for an extensive array of fashion shows and presentations. My um, involvement with the fashion industry came about through Alexander McQueen. And when he had his degree show at Central St Martins, he wrote to me and said, um, could he loan some things for, for, for the models to wear? And so I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, I was glad to help a, help a student. So that's how the relationship began. In 2014, at the Fashion Space Gallery, London saw the unrestrained imagination and conceptually ambitious ideas of Simon Costin come to life in the Impossible Catwalk Shows exhibition. What this exhibition really is, is a series of sort of what-ifs. What if a designer was to uh, graffiti a disused street in London or any, any city? I think I never grew up. I really liked fairy stories. So that idea of creating a, a sort of a wonderland or an alternative way of living your life was always very key for me. With a vision to enrich our society by ensuring that the traditions remain at the forefront of the British identity, the Museum of British Folklore is currently virtual with plans to build a world-class centre. The challenge for us with the Museum of British Folklore is that it's never been attempted before. It's a living tradition. It's not something that we're recording that's happened. It's around us all the time. So how do you contextualise that within a museum? There isn't a lot of material culture generated with folklore. You know, the costumes get thrown away, the whittly straw bear gets burnt at the end of the day. So how you represent that within the context of a museum is a really interesting challenge because museums are so object-based. And when you haven't got objects, then how do you, what do you do? The vision for the museum, it's been drawn up by Adam Richards, the architect. You come in and you, you navigate around the wheel of the year, really, from spring to summer to autumn to winter. And there's a, a grove of trees in the centre. You have the spring festivals in the, in the beginning, moving around to the fire festivals at the end. Anyone out there with 20 million, let me know. We currently have an exhibition at the London College of Communication. Um, it's called Figures of Folk. In 2009, I initiated this project where we would send a blank doll out to all the Morris teams. And there's over 700 Morris teams in the UK. The Morris team would dress it in their team kit and send it back. And the intention was to document all the variety of Morris teams and the stories involved and the people who made, made the figure. And they generate material culture and tell their stories through it. It's, it's, uh, one of the figures has come back and they've woven in human hair to make a beard. One figure came back with a leg brace on because the chap in the team broke his leg skiing. So again, it's all about storytelling, which wasn't what I was expecting at all. It's been a really nice aspect of the project that's come out consequently. British customs and traditions are a prevalent theme throughout designers' collections. From McQueen's regal undertones and Gareth Pugh's folkloric influence, subtle reminders of the rich British heritage, which is just as important today as it has ever been. Traditions give us an opportunity uh, where communities come together. People that wouldn't necessarily come together coming together to celebrate something that's really specific to their community. And I think that's massively important. The main aim, I would say, was to cherish and reflect the rich sort of folk heritage that Britain has, but to also bring to people's attention that it's not something that's sort of we're recording that's already happened, that's past, it's something that doesn't happen anymore. It's very, very current. I don't know why it's been overlooked in Britain that we don't have a museum of folklore. It's shocking, I think.